So we're here for another edition of the podcast with Jim, which is the Jim's Group podcast called the Jim's Cast. And this is an emergency edition because we want to get this out tonight before the Ask Jim Live, which is at 7 o'clock, which is a coronavirus uh, special, special, yeah. special, if we call it that. So let's get straight into it, Jim, and let's talk about the customer side of it now and, and the franchisees and how that's all affected with customers. Well, actually, we're in a very strong situation because our customer, our leads are coming in just as well as ever. In fact, Monday was a pretty much record day, so the leads are continuing to flood in. We've got the same issue as we normally have, which is too much work, not enough franchisees. Mm. So we're, we're very confident in the point of view of continuing. And we don't think people, because of the coronavirus, are going to not want their lawns mowed or their, or their pest control done or those kind of things, their fences built. We think that'll continue. What, what they won't do is be going out to restaurants and flying interstate and so forth. So they'll be able to put what we do. I think for customers, it's important to know that some franchisees haven't even seen a cu- their customer in 10 years, for example. There's some yeah. mowing guys I know who have just always been the payments, you know, whatever it's done, done by phone or done by an invoice, mm-hmm. and there's no interaction whatsoever. And that can be for the majority of divisions. We'll try and reel off the names before off camera with all the divisions. Yeah. We couldn't think of one. Well, where... there's no division in gyms that actually requires direct contact with a customer. They don't even require to be in the same house as a customer. I mean, certainly, you know, one and a half metres is nothing. Mm. Payment can be remote. So our franchisees are actually, apart from somebody sitting at home in front of a, a, a laptop, you know, doing remote office work, our franchisees would be the safest people in the entire economy, the least likely to get infected. Mm. If they get infected by going to a party or a book, well, actually, I can't help that. But in terms of their job, it's a very, very safe job. It's safe, obviously, from a health point of view, and it's also very, very safe from a financial point of view. So it's business as per usual for customers. So make sure if you do have your gyms guy or gyms woman, keep using them. Um, they're very safe. And we've and you've obviously done an address to them as well via via communication, saying yeah, you're not feeling right. unwell, that sort of stuff. We, we will prepare for lockdown ourselves. We've actually got it ready so that the whole national office, the call center, everything can all be run remotely online. So no matter what happens, no matter how severe the crisis, we're still going to be under take the calls, look after our franchises, look after our clients. Yeah, because we do have another site set up for the call center, for example, which has been which has been used sometimes. They do do scenarios where there's a disaster or something. Yeah. So that's ready to go. And people can just, they, can just, they can just do it remotely. Yeah. Everything is computerized here. We've got a very advanced computer system. So mm. it's it doesn't matter what happens to the wider society in terms of how bad it gets, our franchisees are going to be looked after and our clients. So from a business side point of view, ready to go. Just keep, keep, keep calling up if you need anything done. All right, so let's talk about the training itself now, because this has been a pretty hot topic during the week. Mm. Uh, we've new, we have new franchisee training every three to four weeks, depending on, on the service. So do you want to talk about that? Well, we've, we've got training going next week, and we've got people that, uh, we've got preparations in place to keep you know safety down. We're not going to be shaking hands and so forth. And we've got plenty of room to keep to, to seat people far apart, so we'll absolutely minimise infection. But we're also set up for remote training. All of our training can be done remotely. So we've got people who can't travel for some reason. They can do the whole course remotely. The, the cost is actually the same. We save a bit on lunch, but, but we have to actually, we have to <laughs> yeah. do an online assessment. So we've got to actually know that people have done the course and understand it. But yeah. our induction training is, will continue no matter what. Yeah, so the training will be live streamed via YouTube. So mm-hmm. it's going to be done. We'll send some links out with that. And there's a, there's a workbook assessment, which is um, normally they fill out by paper. Uh, they'll fill that out and they'll email that back to us for now. So it can go on. And, and the good thing about that actually moving forward is that those live stream sessions will be recorded. So that moving forward for whatever reason, if, if, if somebody's done the training, forget something, they can actually, oh, I can watch that session again mm-hmm. online. So it's, probably, it's not a bad thing from that regard. We, look, we, we might actually see a, a, a big increase in numbers um, over the next whatever period it takes because people people are going to be laid off in droves the people laid off from from hospitality from airlines from travel from all kinds of businesses the restaurants and so forth um a lot of them are going to have um they're going to have redundancy payments we're a safe place to come we're mm. a place people can actually have a safe job and a safe income well how concerning do you actually think that is for the economy is that I think it could be pretty bad. Right. My, my, I know some people say it'll all be gone in a month or so. I don't believe that. I, I think the most likely thing is we're going to have this crisis going until they actually develop a vaccine, which is probably a year to wait here, months to wait. What we can do, and I think that's very important as a society, we need to slow the, the epidemic down. I don't think we can stop it. But the difference between just letting it rip, as it's happening in Italy, and slowing it down is, is what's going to happen to people who do get sick. Mm. Because if, if, if you got it to 60% of the population, you're going to have like a couple of hundred thousand people dying 
people turning up at hospital and being told we can't help you, you're too sick, go away and die, this kind of thing. That's, that's what we've got to avoid above all costs. If we can just keep it down to the level where the health system can cope with it, we have a great health system in Australia, then it's not going to be that bad. I mean, I've got a, um, a staff member, Leo, I was just talking to before, and his father's 80 years old and he's got heart problems. I mean, one thing that he cannot have is he cannot get coronavirus. So what we're actually arranging, because he's living with his family now, he's going to come and live in our conference centre. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, why not? We've yep. got plenty of rooms. Yep. Um, our conference centre is virtually shut down. That's mm. one loss that we are at taking. But Jim's group itself is, is very healthy. Yeah, I know my mum's in a nursing home at the moment, so that's a bit of a concern. Well, you really shouldn't visit her. No, I'm not going to visit I won't be visiting and that's her. Pretty, that's that's pretty horrible, because yeah. I think it's awful that elderly people can't have... But when you talk about the risk of dying... Oh, yeah. No, she's only 61, but it's... um. It is, a, it is a risk. She's a bit frail, so it's not going yeah. to happen. But I think what you just said then is, is absolutely spot on. That's the whole thing is about not overboating mm. the system, right? And yeah. that's the whole thing for the measures and procedures. We don't we don't panic about it. We, nothing we're doing is rushed or, or overdone. We just take reasonable, sensible precautions. We, we act in a way that preserves the business in every sense. Preserves, looks after our clients, looks after our franchisees, our income, everything. We just don't take foolish risks. And that's what we do for the sake of our own people and the sake of the societies wide. We've got nearly 4,000 franchisees. Mm. We want to we wanna keep them healthy. We don't want anybody spreading disease to anybody. Now let's talk about the, um, the franchisee and the franchisor side argument off this. <laughs> Jim's phone's going off. It's all right. It's a good, good time. That's my science fiction ring. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Let's talk about the franchisee, franchisor side of it, which you just mentioned then. So what's being done? Because we have had franchisees and franchisors email through some concerns and stuff like that. So can you tell us a bit more specifically about that side of it? Well, there shouldn't be any major problems. Obviously, if a franchisee got ill or had to stay home to look after, you know, children or something like that, or sick people or anything like that, or they became in, even at risk of an infection, obviously what we'll do is suspend their fees. There's no question about that. I think, I think the major issue we'd be concerned with too is to make sure that other franchisees could look after their customers so they don't lose goodwill. Because as I said, I don't expect the demand for our services to drop. So somebody's got 60 regular mowing clients uh, and, they're, and they're out for a few weeks. You know, they may want, the, they want their fellow franchisees to step in and look after them to preserve the goodwill of their business. Mm. So, it could be, could be a busy time because, as you said, if people are home for two weeks or whatever, let's say if this quarantine happens or whatever, they'd be mm. going around looking around the home, oh, I need this done, I need this done, I need this done. So our franchisees can do it, so it could be a very busy time. The strange thing is actually going through Jim's Plus, independents seem to be suffering quite a lot. They're ringing us up and saying, hey, there's not much work around. But our own people, our own work to Jim's is actually holding up extraordinarily well. Mm. I mean, we actually, as I said, Monday was actually well above the average for the last two weeks. I just checked all the figures through, even though we're going you know, into winter and so forth. And yep. The grass is dying down. The, the, the leads are actually holding up or even increasing. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's because of people, the trust factor or knowing that you would have something in place or? I'm not sure why actually. I, 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 don't, I don't see any particular reason why demand should die off, but we have seen some independents saying this, but for gyms it's not the case. There is a big trust factor. We have this, this huge unmet demand. Mm. There, there, are, there are hundreds of thousands of people who've been trying to get gyms to give the service and we just can't. So I think that a lot of people want things done and maybe there's the opportunity to get them done now. True, and I think that might be the case. If it does happen with the quarantine, let's say if it does in two weeks or whatever it is, um, that might be the case definitely for our people. So what about the future of the business itself? So obviously this is a big shock to most businesses and their systems, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of planning and post this to see what they can do, safeguards in the future. Have you had a thought about that? Mm, I think we're as safe as any business can be. We're about the most recession-resistant business you could imagine. We actually tend to do much better during recessions than we do. But back in the 90s, late 90s, we had a recession. We actually grew from 1,000 to 1,400 in a single year. We've never done as well as that before or since. And that was basically because of the economy. You've got people who've got no jobs say, here's gyms, we, you've got work for us. Mm. And, and we did, and we looked after them, and, and we could, you know, and, you, and in a recession, you get some very capable people who are laid off. And, and it's, it's quite strange, actually. You get somebody who's a bank manager, which is a pretty prestigious white collar job. In actual fact, they tend to make at least as much money or more mowing lawns or you know cleaning houses or pest control or whatever as they did previously. And so even when the recession finishes, they want to stay with us. Mm. And do you think it's because of that thing where they've had that employment and this event's coming on, bang, and they're like, I don't want to go mm. for that again. I want to take my life in my, my hands and my control and be accountable to myself. Yeah. 
and once they get involved in it, they like it because of there's, there's, there's benefits that people don't quite understand it, which is the, which is the flexibility and the fact of being able to take your kid to a, uh, a sporting event on a Saturday afternoon or on, on a, during the afternoon or during the week, for example, which, which most fathers can't do. So when I talk to, to long-term franchisees, because I ring people up on their anniversaries, like 10, 15, 20 years and so forth, 25 years, and I talk to them about it, and the biggest thing they tend to say is it's been so good because I see my children growing up. So once people get the hang of it, even though they had a white-collar job they might not have thought about it in the past, they get laid off, they get a redundancy package, they buy a franchise, and then they think, this is fantastic, I wish I'd done this 10 years ago. Mm. And I hear that all the time. All the time, people are telling me, I wish I'd done this 10 years ago. I wish I'd done this five years ago. Well, it could be interesting because if people are quarantined and let's say the kids, the schools get shut down or whatever it is and the kid, they're at home with their kids more often, they're going, geez, how good is this? You know, I get to actually hang out with my kids or whatever and, you know, like, I want to do this all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, that, at least with us as a business, they have the opportunity to come and do that. So you might give them a bit of a taste of what it actually is like to spend more time with your kids. So who look, knows? I, look, I, I love it myself, actually. I, I, I have a 10-year-old son, and he is absolutely delight. We are so close. He's, I'm very keen on science and stuff like that, and we talk all the time about such things. I'm so close to him. In a normal job, I couldn't do that. But it's it, being a father now, obviously, people think I'm a workaholic because I'll answer emails at 10.30 at night, <laughs> or sometimes I'll yeah. be on the computer at um, you know, 5 in the morning. And I do work strange hours. But when my son is around and I want to talk to him, I can. You do work strange hours, but you work in little short bursts, don't you? It's like yeah. a two-hour burst, one and a it's half hour. It's very flexible. It's yeah. actually a great lifestyle. I, mm. I, I love it. And it's the same when I was mowing lawns. It's very much the same kind of thing. It's not so much that I work very limited hours. It's not that I work 10 hours a week or something like that. I probably work, I don't know how many hours a week. But it's when I want to work. Mm. And I can drive my kids to school and I can pick them up and, and I, can, I can spend time with them. I, I love that sort of thing. And that's what a franchise has got. And people see this and they get involved in it and they understand how much better it is. I've heard this so many times. People who've had really prestigious white-collar jobs and, and everybody thinks they're in the top of the world and they say, I've gone out and I bought a cleaning franchise. I, 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 I know my wife better. I've got a better marriage. I've got a better life. And I'm making the same money as mm. I was in this job. Mm. But i got a life. No, it truly is. And look, I'm up, in this time, if worst comes worst news quarantine, I hope people do reconnect with their families and, mm. and spend each day and talk, unless they make the phone call to a bunch of friends they haven't spoken to a long time and sort of reconnect with each other. So it be interesting to see what happens. There is, a, there is a good opportunity. I mean, one of the things about now, we're, we're so connected and there's so much online. Mm. You can do a lot of things online, which we couldn't. If this happened 10 years ago, it would have been a lot more difficult. Mm. But we are very well set up. It's amazing how quickly we managed to basically work out a way of getting all of our staff to, to work remotely online, including the call centre. Well, I've, I've, me personally, I've always been a big believer in like the concept of driving an hour each way to go to an office to be in a room of people then go home. It doesn't. It just seems to me as a strange concept when we have all this technology available. It's mm. just about how do you... There is, there is something for said to be person-in-person person interaction, but you can really truly run a business from home now if you do have the right things in place. I, I do like that, actually. I do mm. like being able to talk to people directly. Yeah. I like to be able to meet my prospective franchisees and my franchisors. I like to be able to go around and talk to my staff. So, Don't it, get me wrong. There's it, some, there's some cool. for face-to-face contact. Don't get me wrong with that. But sometimes it's not always necessary as well. But the interesting thing is when we, when we look at what makes franchisees successful, it's not the occasional face-to-face meetings with a franchisor. It's good to have regular meetings with mm. fellow franchisees, which we're going to be able to do on Skype in, in these hard times but in actual fact the biggest effect that we found from a franchisor is they're talking to the franchisee regularly on a phone call a short regular phone call once or twice a week is a lot more effective than a longer meeting face to face so frequency of contact is very important mm. and that's a principle that can apply in a lot of different places as long as we keep in contact with each other phones skype and stuff it's very advanced these days yeah definitely i agree with you because know, i think i think the regular contacts key because they're sort of going if you don't hear from your franchise or from whoever let's say if it's in work you go mm. what's joel to him and spoken to him for a month but if you're speaking to someone every week or every three days or whatever it is you do have that constant line we used to have a system where they sat down for half a day with a franchisee once a year and we found there was zero effect right but a three minute phone call once a week has a massive effect mm. So it's the frequency. And phones are, phones are great. Yeah. Skype is great. There's a lot of good ways of doing things these days. We don't need to be in contact. It's nice to be in contact, but in a situation like this, we can easily do what we need to do without that. I think post this whole thing, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for remote working software, remote working sort of mm-hmm. companies to come in and actually make a company remote proof in terms of they can do it 
remotely. So a lot of opportunity. You know, there's there's things you get, there's programs you can you can actually track keystrokes. There's pressure sensors, how long someone sits at a chair. There's all these different things you can put in place. Well, I've talked to, to my team manager, and he says it's very easy to know what somebody's doing because everybody has certain tasks. Yes. If they weren't doing the work, you can you can pick it up pretty quick. And the same thing with their with their um, with their call center. We know how many people, how long they're taking to take the call. We know with our um, documents department. You know, contracts come through; they've got to get done. It's pretty obvious people mm. aren't doing their job. So, working. Remotely, I think it'll lose a bit in terms of social contacts and stuff, which is valuable. And, and, and I will certainly miss being able to chat directly with people. But I think we can we can we can work out fine. Mm, definitely. So what what about yourself? We've we've touched on it before with some content regarding what you do personally, which was prior to this whole thing, which you've done for a long time. So do you want to touch on that in regards to how much you you do the whole year year of food stuff like that? Oh yes, yeah. Well, I've been saying this for a long time, and it's in other sections too. Mm. But people should be prepared, and it's it's funny. In, in until until a few weeks ago, people were just saying, "Oh, Jim's on his own hobby horse, you know, year's supply of food." Come yeah, on, that is, but that's one of me. Yep. <laughs> Suddenly, you know, I haven't had one person look at me as cuts in the past. I feel very vindicated. <laughs> but seriously, to have a have a year's supply of food is is nothing. It's easy to do. It's not even very expensive. And then other necessities like toilet paper. How difficult is that? You just put it in the corner of your room, you gradually use it, and 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 life goes on as usual. I mean we could be shut down, we could have no no deliveries for, for three months, we'd be fine. I mean we miss a bit in terms of diet, certain things we enjoy doing mm. but we, we would live and we would we would we could last for a year without food, and I think everybody should be able to do that. So, what do you think about the whole panic buying thing that's been going on? Well, yeah, look, it's 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 foolish because in actual fact they're producing seven times more goods, like especially toilet paper, than people than the normal. So there's plenty of supplies. The biggest problem they just can't they just can't restock it enough. That's why they're closing the supermarkets. Mm. I think it's. It's just unnecessary. I mean, I mean, goodness gracious! If you've got a few rolls, let the let the pensioners have it for heaven's sake. Oh, I think it's embarrassing. I think you got a large population of disability pensions, older older people, whatever, and they can go in there and they can't get anything because you've got a bunch of greedy, greedy people who've just done that, which is out of control. Yeah. And I think there should be serious repercussions for people like that. But once yeah. again, if if people but. prepared properly for this thing, then there wouldn't be the issue. I mean, we haven't bought toilet paper. We haven't needed to mm. because obviously there's only a limited amount. Let people have it who haven't got supplies. If everybody was properly prepared, there'd be no such thing as panic buying. Well, probably money-wise, it's not it's not feasible for a pension or someone on disability support pension to prepare. They don't have the money for it, Jim. Well, actually, I think just about anybody does because one of the things we're going to be doing with Jim's preppers is mm. setting up a, a financing scheme. Like we do for, if you want landscaping done, you just get a loan to cover the $5,000 cost of the landscaping. To have, you know, $5,000 buys a lot of prepared food, I tell you that. You know, a lot of rice and this kind of things and, and toilet paper, those kind of things. I think we can do it. And in actual fact, then you pay it off as you go. It doesn't actually cost any more to do it that way. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't think someone with a pension or who's living weekly to week would be able to afford that. That's what I'm saying with that. There might be other people who can, let's say your typical income family, but there is low income people who would need the support. Well, and there's people who've got a poor credit rating who can't borrow. All I'm saying is mm. that for the, for 90% of the population, being prepared is really, really useful. And the great thing about that is if 90% were prepared, the 10% that can't be will get looked after very, very well because they'll be able to provide get the stuff available. Or if there's governments need to produce emergency supplies, the government can help them. Mm. Everybody should have it. Jim's purpose is going to be big. That's the only new venture I'm actually launching at this stage. I've got a great guy who's, who's really into this kind of stuff. And he, he's got, he knows all about preparation of food and where to get the best. We're going to have a website set up within a few weeks that'll actually, you can, you can log in there. You can actually see what you need. You can click on it. You can work out where to buy it, how much to pay for it, how to prepare it and stuff. Or you can just click a button and we'll do it for you. This is going to be, I think it's going to be a great division, Jim's Preppers. Well, it's going to be interesting to see post this what happens and what businesses form. I can presume there's going to be a lot of new businesses, obviously disinfectants, soaps. These things are going berserk on the stock market in some companies just in regards to the value of them. So, Look, this, this, isn't, this is not the end of the world. Coronavirus is a, going to be a shock. We're going to go into a recession. We're going to have a lot of people that are going to be upset and hurt by it. But it's not... You know, within a, within a year or so, it'll be over. There'll be a vaccine. They're working frantically on it all over the world right now, and mm. and they're good at that kind of stuff. And they're getting better by it all the time. So it'll be over. I think the biggest thing is we've got to learn from this, and let's not be unprepared next time. 
if we can have more people properly prepared with stored food, with toilet paper, with soap, with the necessities of life, put it up in just a corner there, and then as soon as something like this happens, people just say, I'm fine. And we don't have to worry. We're not panicking at all about it because we don't need to because we're prepared. Yeah, but I think it's a big wake-up call for me. It shocked me how stupid some people are. That's the big concern for me is when something goes wrong. Let's say if there's another scenario, let's say in 10 years' time, whatever it might be, as you referred before, let's say it was an EMP or whatever, hmm. the way people react is very scary, and that's the thing for me. There doesn't seem to be a lot of critical thinking going on. It's well, all imagine, self-serving behaviour. Right. Imagine if there was an EMP, if, if suddenly there's no, there's no computers, there's no electricity, there's no, most vehicles don't work. Mm. I mean, that would be deadly serious. Having a year's supply of food means that you've got a 90% chance of getting through, of, of surviving, as compared with everybody else having a 20% chance. Mm. And, and, of course, the more people are prepared, the, the better the prospects for those who aren't. So I think it's a matter of... I hope people will wake up a bit. Prepping is not, is not wild. It's not stupid. It's just sensible. It's like I often say, people say, well, why, are you, why do you live in fear? Why should you get a year's supply of toilet paper set aside and, 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 and food and those kind of things? And I say, well, hang on a bit. Have you got a house? Yeah. Got fire insurance on the house? Why? Why do you have fire insurance on the house? Just in case the house burns down, which is very unlikely. One chance in a thousand, you're covered. You're prepared to invest in getting your house covered so you don't have a financial issue. Why wouldn't you invest a comparable amount or even less to save your family, to look after them in a case of need? Why is, why is that not reasonable? I think it's sensible. Well, based on what's happened, it is. Because statistically, like, what's the, what's the chance of your house burning down compared to something like this happening? You've, and it's happened, so, yeah. you know. You... Well, look, my aim, we've got something like 40 staff working in Jim's group. My aim after this has all gone through is that every single one of my staff, I'm going to try and encourage them and help them in any way I can to have proper preparation for themselves and their families so that if anything ever happens again, and it may I don't assume this is the last last virus we'll ever have, the last crisis we'll ever mm. get. I think there'll be other things coming up in the future. We're an interconnected world. There's lots of things that could go wrong. But I would like all my people that, that I care about, including my staff and my franchisees, to be ready. Mm. Now, that's going to be important because um, just having that, let's say, post this, having these things in place and in franchisees, obviously, Spill if Jim's group head office is very important for, for everyone as well. And it's good to hear that it is. It is going to be fine, business as usual, when we've got things in place. But yeah, post this. I think even though it's a, it's a bad time, is the opportunity post this, as you said, for all these sort of these these storage of these 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 materials, the um these disinfectants, these soaps, all these sort of things which are going to come out of this and the behaviours. Hopefully, it can change. We might look upon this and and say thank God for the coronavirus because it prepared us for things that are coming. Mm. If people learn from this and they learn to be prepared, and everybody should, the Mormon Church has for years has had this policy where every member should have a year's supply of food. There's nothing outrageous about it. It could be anything. It could be unemployment. It could be any reason at all. Having a year's supply of stored food is a very sensible thing. Let's just get back to, to old and traditional values in this and, and look after ourselves and not assume that the world is always as totally 100% secure as, it, as people think it is and always will be. I mean, we're doing a lot of dangerous things. We're, a lot, we're so reliant on China for buying so much stuff. I mean... We, we need to have more ability to do things in this country. Well, do you think this is the race, like, a, as I said, a good shock to the system for that? I hope it is. Right, okay. I really hope it is. Yeah. Australia could be so well off. We're, a, we're in a very good situation. We've got plenty of land. We're not overpopulated. We've got plenty of food. We're, we're distant from other places. We've got a nice moat around us. <laughs> yeah. We're in a very, very good situation to cope with any future problem. If people can be prepared themselves, and we need to become more self-sufficient. Look, even things like, I know it's old-fashioned. You say, oh, you know, my dad or my grandfather used to have, you know, his own vegetable garden, his own fruit tree. That's old hat now. We just go to the supermarket. Well, you know, is that so stupid? Listen, putting up a fruit tree is nothing. You just grow it. Why not, why not dig up the lawn? I know I'm, I'm against Jim's mowing, but Jim's mowing, people can do it for you. <laughs> why not have a veggie patch, which yeah. we, can, we can do for you? Which they can do, yeah. Why not, why not plant a few fruit trees around? We've got fruit trees in our backyard right now. We're just eating all the apples for them. They're a little bit um, blotched and they're different. We've got pear tree is, is going berserk. I mean, trying to give the pears, pears away. away yeah, there's a lot in the office, yeah. Yes. There's a heap. There's so many, and that's just, we've done nothing. We just planted a few trees and haven't done any particular look after them. And we've got all this fruit coming out. There's a new service code for the, for the mowing and garden care division. Is that one there we can create? 
the yeah. veggie patch or something like that. They can do that definitely. I know they do landscaping and they do garden renovations, but why yeah, not why do not? that? I'm sure there might be a bit of demand for that. I think I think I think a vegetable garden is, is beautiful. I think a fruit tree is a beautiful tree. I think they're magnificent. They actually produce nice flowers in the springtime. Hmm. Why not have something useful in your garden instead of just ornamentals? It's it's nothing. Actually, a quarter acre lot, which is bigger than most houses these days, I know, but a quarter acre lot could basically feed an average family. Hmm. It's not it's not that much, and it's fun. It's actually good exercise. One of the reasons that I'm fit. It's because I actually go out gardening, so it's 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 self sufficiency. It's it, I find it it's a great lifestyle. I love being outside working with my hands. I've got um, callous hands, as I've mm-hmm. often pointed out, yeah. and I and I like that. So why not? Why don't we grow more of our own food? Why don't we get a bit more prepared? Do you think this event though, as well? Will, will, this is another question, a bit off topic, but politically, do you think it will help bring the world together a bit better than what it was before? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. I, I, I don't want to get too political about this. I know people have different views, but I do think that having an American president who is... America's taken a, a very important position of leadership in the world mm. in the past, where it's, America's taken responsibility, and, and, and America's a great ally for us to have. You couldn't have a better ally than That's America. the most important, yeah. And I think having a president who who really is much less interested in anybody else besides outside of America, I think that's a problem. Mm. And, and and quite frankly, if I was an American, I wouldn't be voting for him. Mm. But I, I don't want to upset anybody and I know get too political. But the fact of the matter is, whether a person is left or right, I think having having some concern for the rest of the world is important in this day and age. We have to think of as as a, as a as a people, and and what happens overseas affects us so let's let's look out for each other i think as a as a as a nation and, and as humanity and i think that's actually that's actually a fairly sensible self-regarding way of looking at things we look after other people mm. and then you know we're in a better environment for ourselves and our families well it's been interesting to watch especially in asia when it's first happened with china and how korea was dealing with it, south korea how they're working together and they're sort of talking to each mm. other and Italy obviously has been really heavily affected, you know, how people are helping them outside of Italy. So I think from that point of view, it's good to see countries working together and a bit more communicating. You know, there, there, there is a sense of, of world crisis. We're all in this together. We're on the same side. Yeah. I think one of the most wonderful things is the way the scientists are working on the cure. And they're going, there, there are hundreds of teams all over the place racing for a cure, trying different sort of things. I mean, that's, that's an amazing effort. That's our entire humanity working together, putting all these resources into something so important for all of us. It's a great, it's a great precedent. I, I, I hope you're right. Mm. And I hope people, we, we do learn to hang together. And I say this as a, as a capitalist and, and somebody who, who puts my family first, as always. But at the same time, it doesn't stop me being concerned about, about the wider community of Australia and the world as a whole. I agree, and I'm hoping that... Science budgets in general in governments are very they're a lot they're a lot less than what they should mm. be. So me personally, I love science. I love the STEM the STEM fields. I'm hoping that post this as well, the governments start doubling the budgets of the science research institutes in their place. Yeah, well, you wouldn't have to so, argue that with me because I'm involved uh, in a science uh, project myself, yeah. as you know, which has important health implications, and I'm spending a great deal of my own money on mm. these kinds of developments. I think science, particularly, I have to say, the biological sciences. I don't know about things like cyclotrons and so forth. But the biological sciences, things to do with health, things to do with medicine, that, that's an incredible area to be involved in. I think it's, it's, there's very little that can do more for humanity than that. And there are other things too, like, like um, development of, of better, more efficient um, solar collectors and so forth, and better batteries and those kind of areas to help to, to green the planet and so forth and cut down on carbon emissions. I think there's, there's fantastic things that can be done. And we're progressing you know, week by week and we're getting better at this and we need to put more resources Totally agree. Yeah, and I, and I think that's what's going to happen post this. I think that there's going to be a massive call from the people to start saying, hey, you need to start putting more money into the... I into hope the, so. I hope. I'm liking it will happen. It's going to happen in America. I, t- I tell you what, one of the things that, that, that Trump did to save money was to cut back on a lot of this kind of stuff yes. in, in the federal Which is spending. stupid. I don't, know. I don't think that's going to go too well in the next election coming absolutely up. Absolutely, it's not going to. You know, the STEM stuff, STEM fields are the most important we have, and they've got to be absolutely ramped up, and I'm hoping that... Not saying this is a good time, but this thing can reset priorities in government budgets and where they allocate money and how they support people, and it's going to be a good reset. So we'll see what happens. So just to make it clear as well, Jim, it's business as usual for customers. Um, training is still going ahead as per normal for the next one. They're just yep. Training is going ahead. 
the call centers going ahead, the national office yeah. going ahead, all our support systems are going ahead, the whole thing's going ahead. And at the moment, it looks like the clients are going ahead too. We've got no problems with that. Mm. We will, we'll, we'll sail through this. We, we have to be sensible. We have to be prepared. But we are, we are very comfortable. In, in fact, there's every chance we'll come out of it a lot better off than we are right now because I hope we're going to pick up a whole lot of new, great franchisees. And for anyone watching, make sure um, you keep using your gym's person if you have one. It's business as usual, as Jim has said earlier in, in the thing. Our people are very, very well protected against coronavirus. We, we, are, we are talking to them all the time about taking precautions mm. and not getting infected. We are really encouraging them. We think... Can't help what they do privately, but in general, we're doing everything possible to make sure our people are as safe as they can be. In any case, our clients don't need to come in contact with them anyway, and they shouldn't. Mm. Nobody should be within one and a half metres of a stranger at any time. And we know our franchisees have been very due diligent just because of the emails they've been sending in the franchisors and stuff. So they'll be very, very due, uh, due diligent on that sort of stuff. So we'll leave it there, Jim. Thank you very much for this. And make sure you watch tonight the um, Ask Jim at 7 o'clock as well. Jim will talk a bit more about it as well. But um, thanks for that. We'll leave it there.